Hey everyone, today we are looking at unit conversions between atoms or molecules and moles. So previously we looked at conversions between grams and moles. And what we saw was you can use the molar mass, which sometimes you have to calculate, to convert between the two. But the problem with that is sometimes it can be a little bit lengthy because you end up having to calculate a molar mass for each different problem. When we're looking at atoms and molecules, thankfully, there's actually only one number that we have to remember. The relationship we're going to use is one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms. Oops. Okay. Now, it can be atoms or molecules. The two can be used, like, not interchangeably, but the name switches depending on if you're dealing with an element or you're dealing with an atom, or an element or a compound. So let's look at some example problems. The first one says, how many atoms are found in 14 moles of aluminum? So we're going to do these problems very similarly to the previous ones. We're going to start by just writing down what we know. 14 moles of aluminum. We're going to set up our chart. Now whatever unit we start with, that goes on the bottom right. And on the top, we're going to put what units we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for atoms of aluminum. Now we need to plug in the numbers here. From our relationship, we can see that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms. So that's a lot of atoms. Let's cancel out our units. And now the only unit we have left is atoms of aluminum. But we are now at the unit that we want. So all we have to do is solve the math problem now. Now we treat these problems the same way you treat multiplying fractions. We're going to multiply the top pieces together. And that's going to be our new numerator. So 14 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. And then we're going to multiply our bottom pieces, and that's going to be our new denominator. But the only thing we have is a 1. So we're just it's just going to be itself. Okay. Now anything divided by 1 is just itself. So we actually don't even need these bottom parts. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm just going to erase these. Uh, let's just see if we can get it. Perfect. OK. So I have 14 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Now, this is the part where you would use a calculator. However, I don't really want to enter times 10 to the 23rd power into a calculator. So instead, I'm going to just multiply these first two parts together. So if I take out my handy dandy calculator, I have 14 times 6.02. That gets me. 84.28. Now, I'm going to want this answer in scientific notation. So scientific notation tells us that the first number, the decimal point, has to be after the first usable number. So I have to move my decimal point over right here. So this is going to become 8.42. Three. Generally, there's two decimal places, so 
I just chopped off the 8 and rounded it. But I still have my times 10 to the 23rd. I haven't used that yet. And also, I moved the decimal over 1, so I have to multiply this by 10 to the first power. So I need to also multiply my times 10 to the 23rd. I never did anything with it up here. I just kind of set it aside. And now that I have 10 to the first power times 10 to the 23rd power, exponent rules say I can combine these terms to make this 8.43 times 10 to the 24th power. And the unit that I have left is atoms of aluminum. This is my answer. Let's look at the next problem. How many moles are there? I'm sorry, how many moles of H2O are found in 2.2274 times 10 to the 25th molecules? So this time I'm looking for moles of H2O. But my problem is still going to start largely the same. I'm going to start by writing down what I know. 2.2274 times 10 to the 25th molecules of water. Set up my chart. Whatever unit you start with goes in the bottom right. On the top, I have moles of H2O. Now, my relationship between these two numbers is still the same, even though this is a different substance. Because I'm dealing with moles and molecules, the same as moles and atoms, it's one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my units. And now I have moles of water as my only unit left. So I know I'm in the right spot. I just have to solve the math problem. So I'm going to just scoot this up here a little bit so I got a little bit more room. Okay. Multiply across the top. This number times 1 is just itself. So 2.2274 times 10 to the 25th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now again, this is another part where you would just plug this into a calculator, but I don't want to plug this whole thing into a calculator. That's really cumbersome. There's a lot of big numbers here. So I want to simplify this first. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this, keeping the front number the same first, 2.2274. But this 10 to the 25th, I'm going to split it into 10 to the 23rd times 10 squared. This is the same math rule as I used above. When you have the same base, you add the exponents together. So 10 to the 23rd times 10 to the 2nd is 10 to the 25th. Okay. My bottom piece, I'm going to keep it the same. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. But see how I have 10 to the 23rd on the top and bottom? Anything divided by itself is 1, and anything times 1 is just itself. So that means that I can effectively cancel this out. 
So if I rewrite this, I would have 2.2274 times 10 squared over 6.02. Now this is much easier to enter into a calculator. I can do that quite quickly. 2.2274 times 100, that's 10 squared, divided by 6.02. The answer is 37. And the unit that I have left is moles of H2O.